Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel, UiPath with Eva. Today we're not going to do any one specific thing, we're just going to have some fun with uh, some activities and some concepts, and they are the background processes. We are going to talk also about inter-process communication, and that is not as boring as it sounds. And we're going to tie it all together with trigger scopes. And this is not going to be a long video, and we'll have some fun along the way, so let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, I have Studio opened here. In fact, I have two instances of Studio opened. If we go to the task bar, we can see that I have one that is in the light mode and one is in dark mode. And that's because we're going to develop two processes in parallel here. And we're going to start in this one, the dark mode. And we'll just start a new process. We will call it foreground. And we'll click create. Now, the first topic we're going to talk about is trigger scopes. And I've done a separate video on triggers and trigger scopes. So go and watch that if you want to go a little bit more in depth. But what a trigger scope is, if we go to the activities pane here and type in trigger scope, it's an activity that basically contains two parts, the triggers part and the actions part. And whatever is in the actions part is what we want to perform the activities that we want to run, so to speak. And whatever is in the triggers part is what we want to trigger those actions to take place. So for example, if we just go to the toolbox and delete everything but trigger, we can see that there's quite a few types of uh, triggers here. So we'll just go with the hotkey trigger and drag that into the trigger section. And then in the key dropdown here, I'm just going to select that I want to uh, react to someone pressing the F4 key. So whenever someone presses the F4 key, this trigger is going to fire, and then these events down here are going to happen. And what we want to do here is we'll just do a message box. And we'll just type in, I'm alive, right? And we are going to hide this message box after three seconds. So if we run this, we can see the window or the studio minimizes and we'll minimize the other studio as well. And now in Assistant, we can see that we have this foreground process running and it's only waiting for me to press the F4 key. So if I press the F4 key, we will see the message box saying I'm alive. And now it disappears after three seconds. And if I press F4 again, lo and behold, it appears again and now it's going to disappear. So that's what uh, a trigger scope is. And why do we care about that? Well, you'll see in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, we're going to jump to the other studio. And here I'm going to create a background process. And we'll call it background. And we'll open the main workflow, go to the activities pane, and I'm just going to do a do while loop here. And we'll just say that while one equals one, it's going to do something. And that something is going to be, it's going to do a short delay of, let's say, five seconds. And then it's going to log a message also. And that'll say, I'm in the background. Something like that. So if we run this project, we can see that it minimizes that studio as well. And now we have both the background and the foreground processes running. And that's really the whole point of having a background process is that you can have that process running in the background while still and at the same time in the foreground, you have a process where you can interact with the user interface. Now, wouldn't it be nice if these two processes could talk to each other? Well, it just so happens that they can. So let's try and stop them. And let's go into the background process first. Now, this uh, logs a message every five seconds. We want it to do something a little bit different. We're going to use what is called inter-process communication. So we go to our package manager and we go to the official feed and type in uipath.ipc and we get this uipath IPC activities package that we can install and save. And we'll go to the other studio and do the exact same thing into package manager the official feed, UI path IPC, and install and save. 
And now if we go into the background project first. We can see in our toolbox over here on the left, we have this new group called IPC. And that group contains only two activities. And the one we're going to use in the background process is the broadcast message activity. So we'll drag that in. And we'll put it after the five second delay here and we will delete the log message activity. Now this takes two different properties. One is channel and one is message. And in the message, we'll just type in, I'm from the background. Like that. And then we need to indicate a channel. And a channel is simply any name that we can come up with. It can be anything. So we'll just call this one Bob. And that's the name of our channel. And if we start this process now, every five seconds, it's going to broadcast a message that I'm from the background and that is going to be broadcast on the channel called Bob. So we run it. And then now we are in the foreground project. And in the foreground project, we will also in our toolbox, let me just minimize some of this stuff, have an IPC group. And here we want to use a message receiver trigger. And that's why I did the whole trigger scope thing in the first place, because we're going to replace the hotkey trigger with a message receiver trigger. And that receiver trigger only takes one uh, property, and that is the name of the channel that we want to listen on. And that is the channel called Bob. Now, whenever a message is received on this channel called Bob, we want to take some action. And we're going to, just like before, show our message box. But instead of showing I'm alive, we're going to show the message that we receive from that trigger. So we receive uh, this uh, Rx argument. And if we type that in, we can see that inside of that, there is a message property. And that's really the message that we are receiving from the background process. Now this should be all okay. And if we run this project now, we can see that both are running. And if the background process sends a message to the foreground process, we should see, there we go, the message box that I'm from the background. It hides the message box after three seconds. And then after a couple of seconds, another message is sent from the background and that just keeps on going. And we can see that this is actually what's going on by disabling the background process. And if we do that, we'll see that no more messages are received by the foreground process. And basically our communication line has just died. Now, before we move on, this is a good time to click that red watermark in the bottom right hand corner to subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon so you'll get notified when I put out new content. And if you still kind of think this video is okay, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does make a big difference to my channel. So let's move on. I just want to talk a, a little bit about the limitations of the IPC activities because they do have some limitations. First of all, inter-process communication only works with attended automations. You cannot use this with unattended automations. It simply will not work. Also, the automations that are talking to each other need to run on the same machine and under the same user account. So that's another limitation. And then finally, the payload that is passed back and forth between the sender and the receiver can only be a string up to, I believe, 30,000 characters. So of course, any object that could be serialized into a string less than 30,000 characters, you could send across this communication line and then deserialize it at the other end. And by doing so, you can send you know any serializable object. So there are definitely some workarounds you can do. So as far as using IPC for something really useful, I would love to hear from you what you think a good use case could be. So put that in the comments below. And if you have any questions, also put that in the comments below. Again, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to my channel. And uh, that'll be it for this time. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video that is coming out soon. Until then, take care, stay safe, and thank you for watching. Bye.